Merit at First Sight, former cast tell all. Like the title says, I watched this episode so you wouldn't have to. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tamara and this is Tamara Lynette Tells. This episode featured cast members from previous seasons, starting from the left, Rachel, who was matched with Jose, Bennett, who married Amelia, Paige, who had the horrible experience with Chris, and it was hosted by Monique Kelly, Eris, who was paired with Jasmine, Jamie and Doug, who are the OGs from season one and still married. And then Stasha, who was paired with Nate. This episode could have easily been 30 minutes. So this video is going to be quick. Monique mixed in questions of where are they now? Some behind the scenes of their respective seasons, along with their opinions about the current season. I could have lived without their perspectives on the current season and just have them spill tea about their own seasons. So anyway, let's go over the highlights. Rachel, before she and Jose broke up, they were supposed to do a therapy session together. He didn't show up and eventually blocked her. But now they're officially divorced and they don't keep in touch. So the group was talking about how cameras affect their reaction to certain situations. Rachel used an example of the incident where Jose locked her out of her apartment. Well, the next day when they were talking about it, she remained calm for the camera's sake. Normally, she said she would have yelled at him, but she thinks that if she would have let him have it, maybe things would have been different because she doesn't believe that he ever understood the gravity of what he did. Girl, and he never will listen unless you're shouting out about his great credit score, he is not paying you no mind and could care less about the words coming out your mouth. When Monique asked the panel if any of them had a pact with other cast members, Rachel said that she and the girls had a pact that they wouldn't talk about sex on camera because a few of them worked in education. But someone told the producers and the producers got mad. No one ever confessed to being the tattletale. So to this day, she claims she doesn't know who told. Hmm. Now her season, the other brides were Bao, Mirla, Brett, and Michaela. I wonder which one of them told. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Jose who dropped the dime on them. I could totally see him being a snitch. Now, one thing I thought was interesting that Rachel talked about was how she and Jose were nervous going in to film the reunion episode because their relationship was weak and having to relive or watch and discuss what happened during the season could have made things worse. Not to mention that they hadn't seen most of the cast in a while, so they weren't sure what type of energy they were bringing to the table. It's just another layer to think about how the reunion can potentially add to the downfall of the very few marriages that even make it that far. Yet another reminder of how these relationships are created more for our entertainment than for long-term success. Because it probably would have been best for them to sit out the reunion to preserve their relationship. But of course they had a contractual obligation to be there to give us a show. Stasha, she's happily single. She doesn't keep in touch with Nate. She said Nate never signed that post nup. Say what? On the show, they had them roll up to somebody's office that they were calling a lawyer. They sat down and signed something. Whatever it was led me to believe that it was a post nup. Chow, the fakeness of it all. Stasha said that she had a marriage settlement agreement put in place, but that was it. Now, I've heard that they all have to sign a prenup before they get married. So maybe all that talk of a postnup was just theatrics for the camera anyway. When talking about packs that were made off camera, she said that she and Nate had a pact to not talk about his mom or for her to say tools on camera anymore. Now, remember how she kept on him about using the tools the experts gave them. Well, that got on his nerves and he asked her to drop it. Now, when it comes to getting married again, she said she would get married again, but wouldn't want to go through the legal process. She said, why the court's got to be all involved? Girl, just make sure you pick the correct state to cohabitate in because some states will treat you like a married woman, whether you like it or not, which means you may still have to divvy up if you break up. So Monique asked if anyone was shocked when they saw how their castmates behave when they were watching the season back. Stasha said, Mitch, she said he was rude to Christian. She saw some of it during the season and would call him out in real time. Mitch was a hot mess. I wonder if he's in a relationship now. I need to look him up. Moving on to Bennett. 
He's teaching himself to play a slide whistle. Oh, whoopie doo. He has a girlfriend. Well, they don't use labels for their relationship though. I'm the one calling her his girlfriend. Chow, he had to tell everybody that they sometimes make whoopee. Whoopee? Okay, Bob Eubanks and the Newlywood Game. When Monique asked the panel if they had anyone interesting slide in their DMs, Bennett said that he had a porn star hit him up and that there were a lot of eggplant emojis in her message. Okay, stroke a trying to get a piece of Bennett. Doug and Jamie, they currently live in Florida and they talked about trying to get pregnant, but of course she's now pregnant with twins. I recently announced that in my most recent Where Are They Now video. Jamie said that because of their rough start where she fell on the floor in absolute horror after marrying him, they now renew their vows every five years and this year is their 10th anniversary. Now, something I never knew that Doug talked about is that during their casting process for their season, they were given pictures and asked to rank the attraction level to each person. As it turns out, those photos were pictures of other applicants. Now that's genius. If they were able to keep that strategy up and keep it a secret that the photos were their real potential mates, imagine how different the show could possibly be. Well, unless they decide to be messy and pair them with someone they ranked low, which I wouldn't put past them. So never mind. He also said that he had addiction issues since before he went on the show. So much for their vetting process. Anyway, he hid his addiction from Jamie for several years and was even secretly taking some type of medication to help him with his addiction until recently. He no longer takes it and has been sober from alcohol for over 10 years. Good about the sober, so bizarre about hiding his addiction. Talk about who the fudge did I marry? But they're still together, so I guess we can say that it worked. So later, Doug got on one knee and told Jamie that he wants to stay married to her for more than 10 years to come and gave her a ring in honor of their 10 year anniversary. Now, I thought the idea was super sweet. I think he could have planned out his little speech a little better, but he was probably nervous. It was a nice moment for them and their marriage. Although Jamie said she's sweaty and shocked and like, where did you get the money for this? But she was grateful. Eris, he and Jasmine are still cordial. Now on their wedding night, Jasmine woke him up at three o'clock in the morning to ask him why there was no sexual chemistry between them. He told her his reasons and it sounded like there were embarrassing reasons because she asked if he said it on camera and he gave her assurances that he didn't and wouldn't out of respect for her and her family. He is still tight lipped about it, even though I'm super nosy and want to know. I do respect him for not putting her down or on blast or shining a light on one of her features or breath or whatever the issue was by saying it out loud to the public. But in any case, for the honeymoon, he said he was packed and ready to go. He had all kinds of creams, vibrators, oils, and adult toys, and was ready to break his wife's back out, as he so romantically likes to put it. But something caused him to pump the brakes big time. So far, it doesn't sound like we'll ever know for sure. In the end, he said he didn't get a wife out of this, but he did get a best friend in Shaq. They're really close, and the next time he gets married, Shaq will be one of his groomsmen. And finally, Paige. She was very pregnant on the show, but she has since had her baby, a little girl named Nova Ray. She met her man on a dating app. Okay, got her swipe on. She said the first time she saw the scene where Chris said the reason he wasn't attracted to her was because of her physical features and the face, as he puts it, was at the reunion. She said she was flabbergasted and questioned whether she was good enough and pretty enough. She's since got over that now, but she let that dude get under her skin. He wasn't worth the child. So she feels like she was robbed of an experience and wishes she was in Michael's shoes and was given another chance. I believe she meant that in the past tense, like how she felt back then, because she's still with her boyfriend and she said he's her person and that she's happy with him. But it sounds like she would have said yes if they offered her a do-over after her season or during it even. But that's all I walked away with from this episode. Just a few little nuggets of information from each cast member. It wasn't a true tell-all in my book. There was no juicy tea drops. But the reunion for season 17 looks like it's going to be a tell-all and then some. Some folks are going to be lying. Other ones are going to be crying. It's going to be lit. And I'm here for it. Bring it on. In the meantime, 
that's all I have for now. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in my next video.